Welcome back, LEGO Maniacs. Jamie here, and you're watching Trick Bricks. Today, we're going to begin the long-awaited Season 2 of our Adventures Retrospective, where we'll follow Johnny Thunder and the gang deep into the heart of the Amazon in their quest for the magical sun disk. As an added bonus, 2019 marks the 20th anniversary of the Jungle Sets. And I thought we'd start this season with what may very well be my personal favorite set from the wave, 5976 River Expedition. It was released in 1999 and contains 315 pieces, 7 minifigures, and retailed for $50 in the US. I do have the instructions, but even better, the original box. Even though LEGO had moved away from using physical settings and props in their production photography, I still think this was some awesome box art. And the back features one of the craziest alternate builds ever, which turns the set into what looks like a whale fishing party. <laughs> the photographers were definitely having some fun setting this little scene up. And these two smaller builds are each pretty decent in their own right. Solidifying its status as a vintage set box, the front flap opens to reveal a bunch more photos, a couple of windows so you could get a glimpse of the actual pieces on the ride home from the toy store, and even a little blurb here to jumpstart your imagination. It reads, The adventure continues. Deep in the jungle, the adventurers search for treasure in the ancient ruins. But where there is treasure, there is danger. Spiders, traps, and villains. Only you, the Lego maniac, can help Johnny Thunder succeed in his greatest adventure ever. So, let's kick off that adventure and take a look at the River Expedition. As you can see, the set is comprised of two distinct builds, a boat and a jungle shrine. Let's check out the boat first. I'm a big fan of LEGO watercraft in general, but this one is a bit different in its design, and I like it. No sails or paddles here. This is the 1920s, and Johnny has opted for a more modern form of locomotion, steam. The hull is mostly brick built, instead of using the preformed elements we've seen in the Pirates series. And I like how the bottom is completely flat, so it actually looks like this thing is sitting in the water, chugging down some Amazonian tributary. You've got some chains along each side, as well as a few handles for tying her up to the dock. And at the front, we'll find the bowsprit, with a string running up to the top of this mast. If I had to guess, I'd say this is probably meant to be the radio antenna. And there's even a little red pennant up top waving in the breeze. But the fun really starts when we get on board. Tons of detail and accessories here to check out. Beginning up top, we've got the smokestack, with a wrench clipped to one side and a hammer on the other, and front and center is a printed tile with a few gauges and a key. Railing on each side keeps our driver from falling out, and this right here is probably the rarest element in the set. Only ever offered in this color in two sets, River Expedition, obviously, and the UCS TIE Interceptor. And since this piece is molded in the old dark gray, odds are we'll never see it released again. But moving forward, we'll find the steering wheel, which looks pretty nice since they decided to go with the larger Technic version instead of the standard one we usually get. And on either side of that, there's a lever for controlling important boat stuff. But my favorite detail of this area has to be the way the box art directs you to place this red coffee mug. It just kind of hangs out here on the windshield. And lastly, there's a pair of marker lights on each side. One green, one red. Moving on, let's check out the lower area. The ability to remove the top section makes access and play a bit easier, which is nice, especially since there's a lot down here for our heroes to interact with. The rear has a nice open space for placing minifigs, and just ahead of that we'll find this work area. On the right, or starboard side rather, we've got a small workbench, home to a few artifacts for Doc Lightning to examine, a yellow goblet, and a nice little human skull. <laughs> Trust me, that's not the last or most gruesome thing we'll see in this series. <laughs> the jungle's a tough place, kids. On the port side, there's a small tool rack complete with pickaxe and a fully functional magnifying glass, still one of the coolest accessories LEGO has ever produced. Next, we've got a tank of some sort. The blue tap would lead me to believe this is full of fresh water, but maybe someone out there can inform me otherwise. And finally, across from that is a barrel containing a rifle and a cutlass. 
One thing that's nice about the adventure sets is that they never skimped on accessories. The rest of the boat is all open, so again, plenty of space to place your minifigs. You've even got a few tiny ladders here to help them up this little ledge. And that's all she wrote for the boat. Let's go check out those jungle ruins. I gotta be honest with you, even at the risk of spoiling future jungle episodes, this is definitely my favorite bit of architecture in the Amazon sub-theme. Despite its smallest size, it's just so full of character and charm, and really captures the overgrown ancient shrine look. It's built on a 16 by 24 base plate, and the first place our adventurers are going to set foot is on this small dock. It does bug me just a bit that these posts don't quite reach all the way down to the ground, or water in this case, but I'm willing to overlook that. If you wanted to fix it, you could just add a small blue base plate beneath it. Straight ahead, we'll see a plant and some local wildlife. Two snakes and a scorpion. Behind that is something that I'm still a bit undecided on. I think this palm tree looks great, but as you can see, the trunk is one big preformed element, so there's no way to adjust it the way you would a more traditional palm tree. Again, visually, it's perfect, but I like to have the ability to move the trunk around however I see fit. Interestingly, these four palm leaves are also one single piece. But anyway, if we jump over here to the right, we'll find an ominous looking little build with twin halberds and a full skeleton, not just the skull this time. And sitting here like a piece of cheese in a mousetrap is this ruby. Anyone dumb enough to avoid all the obvious warnings here and try to grab this is going to get a nice big hug from Skelly and his two friends. The adventure sets as a whole are riddled with booby traps, and they're always fun, no matter how big or small. But let's quit beating around the bush and get to the main attraction here. You've got a lot of foliage growing all over this guy, including a green vine draped across the front, which is a really nice touch. There's also a parrot perched up top, and a spider down here scurrying over the leaves. Nowadays, this would probably be built with a lot of curved slopes to give it a more rounded, natural look, but I actually like the more angular aesthetic here. I think it gives it more of a carved stone feel. A pair of piercing green eyes stare out at us, and the mouth looks great with these teeth top and bottom. I guess instead of a stone statue, you could see this as the actual skull of some gigantic beast, like King Kong. One of my favorite details here is the tongue made of red tiles, laid out like a welcome mat to the interior. And what will we find in said interior? You've probably noticed a little gold shimmer coming out of there, and to make things a bit easier, I'm actually going to remove part of this front section. Now we can clearly see the prize Johnny has his eye on, the sun disc. Well, it might be the one he's looking for. The story goes that it possesses magical powers, but the keeper of the sun disc, who we'll get to in a moment, is pretty crafty and has hidden false replicas all over the jungle in an attempt to throw any would-be treasure seekers, good or bad, off his trail. So contrary to what current second-hand prices would lead you to believe, this element isn't particularly rare, being offered in five of the eight sets in the sub-theme. But it's still a pretty cool piece to have in the collection. It's got a few torches flanking it on either side, and a spiderweb and spider make for a nice creepy backdrop. Other than that, there's not much to the interior, which is okay since it leaves room for our minifigs to explore. And speaking of minifigs, we get a pretty nice selection in this set. Of course, Johnny Thunder is included, and for me, he's right up there with Captain Redbeard when it comes to all-time classics. Interestingly, he isn't given any weapons in this set, apart from the spares on the boat, but instead, he's wielding an old-school movie camera, complete with this printed tile film, depicting him clutching a sun disc in front of some jungle ruins. Dr. Lightning is also along for this little excursion, and he too is given a pretty neat tile print, a map that, hopefully, will lead them to the treasure they seek. Both Doc and Johnny are identical to their releases in the original Adventures wave. But the captain of the boat is a new face for the jungle sub-theme, Gabaros. Featuring some pretty cool prints exclusive to his character, like his oil-spattered striped shirt and rather dissatisfied looking face print, he also sports a blue bandana and black kepi hat. According to an old LEGO Mania magazine blurb I found, he's more of a gray area operator, working for anyone willing to pay, even if that happens to be the bad guys. 
And speaking of bad guys, we won't be seeing Sam Sinister or Baron Von Baron in this series, but rather Senor Palomar and his rough and tumble sidekick, Rudo Villano. Palomar looks a bit out of place in the jungle, with his fancy white duds and cowboy hat, but he makes for an excellent lead villain, especially with that finely groomed mustachioed scowl. You can tell he enjoys the finer things in life, and he's given a revolver to help in acquiring them. In contrast, his partner in crime is a bit more greasy looking. I don't speak Spanish, but it's not hard to decipher what the name Rudo Villano is meant to convey. He gets a very nice torso print with some excellent detail depicting a rumpled button-down shirt, a pair of revolvers, and an ammo belt. And he's wearing the same slouch hat as Johnny, although this time it's molded in black. Like his boss, the face print here leaves no question as to his morality, with an even deeper scowl and a large scar on his cheek. Rudo's accessories include a rifle and a bundle of dynamite, as well as the same awesome, fully functional backpack we saw Doc Lightning lugging around most of the time in Season 1. This pair makes for an exciting matchup against the protagonists, but there's one guy here who doesn't care about good or bad intentions. He doesn't like anyone tramping around his jungle. Meet Achu, Keeper of the Sun Disc. Without a doubt, one of the coolest minifigures in the entire adventurer's theme. Topping him off is this fantastic headdress with feather and bird face design, and I also like his face print, with these stripes going across his decidedly unamused expression. His torso and legs feature an elaborate design of feathers, jewelry, and colorful clothing, and to really establish him as the ruler of the jungle, he gets this absolutely amazing cape. His design seems to me more Aztec than Amazon, but it looks fantastic nevertheless. He's got a spear with feathers to keep him company, and of course he looks right at home clutching the sun disc. I like how, much like Pharaoh Hotep before him, he introduces a third faction into the mix, something we won't really see again in future sub-themes. And last but not least, we get a monkey to inject a little mischief into the set. That makes for a total of seven animals slash insects, which is pretty awesome. So it's only our first episode in the Jungle series, but we've already met most of our key players. I'll let them get back to beating each other up, and I'm going to go ahead and offer some final thoughts. As I mentioned in the intro, this might be my favorite set from the Jungle sub-theme. It just feels so true to the spirit of the Adventurers line. You've got heroes, villains, a treasure, and a way for them to get to it. There isn't really anything missing here, in my opinion. So, as you can guess, River Expedition gets a strong recommend from me. If you'd like to pick this one up for yourself, you can expect to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of $75 for a used set, and between $150 to $200 brand new. But, as always, keep your eyes peeled for deals. I got super lucky and snagged this one 99% complete with instructions and box for just $30. Less than $2 was spent finishing up that last 1%. But that's all for today. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to leave a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, so you're sure not to miss the next installment in the Adventures Retrospective series. Until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and play well! <laughs>